Effie and Elliot Lewis on stage. Effie Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost plays. Drama, comedy, adventure, mystery, melodrama. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. Back in 18... Right or two, a very fine daughter decided to do a short story, satirical in Nate's name, about justice. His and, uh, name was Frank Stockton. And as, as often happens, the story was excellent. It was well received as, in our literature. And it has remained in our literature for a reason which Mr. Stockton had not intended. And to make complete sense out of what we're telling you up to now, we add this. Or the tiger. <laughs> In the very olden time, king whose ideas, sharpened by the progressiveness of distant land, as became the half of his, which was barbaric. And he was a kind and great king in the true tradition of the very olden time. In keeping with tradition, too, he had a lovely young daughter, the Princess Miridana, who was the apple of his eye, and for whom he would do anything. Within reason, of course. Father. Yes, my daughter. Father Boom. I wish I'd rid of him. But he just arrived. But he's so ugly. I noticed. Does it make a difference? Father, what a question. I have a position to maintain. True. Pin the bell. Yes, great Zerbino. Oh, my... My pin the bell. Get up. My servant prostrates himself. Pin the bell, you're not a lowly servant. Sing me, mighty king. Uh, pin the bell about the princess. Selected him myself, great Zerbino. Hey. Monstrous. Oh, but power for his appearance. He's a very good worker been accused of a crime. He's ugly. And he's offended the princess. Oh, of course, mighty Zerubino. We must determine if he is given. If he offended the princess, your majesty, and he's only a slave. It is not for us to judge him, Pinabel. We must have a trial. The uh, arena, your majesty? Naturally. He'll have his chance to open one of the two doors like anyone else. Oh, I hope he chooses the tiger. What fun! Yes, it would be entertaining, wouldn't it? Been about tomorrow, when the sun is high. That should give everyone time to get to the arena for the occasion. My subjects will want to know that justice is being done. Good for the morale. See to it, will you, Pinabel? Let the ceremony begin. Bring forth the prisoner. Your Majesty? Well, well, bring forth the prisoner, I said. Your Majesty, I am the prisoner, the slave Timonius. You are? Miradana, is this the fellow? Of course, Father. I thought you said he was ugly. Well, look at him. Isn't he? Hmm. Well, it isn't for me to say, but uh, we'll see. Prisoner, you have been accused of a crime for which you are now to be judged in the fair and impartial manner of our kingdom. Pinabel, tell him the rules. Uh, yes, your most powerful majesty. Uh, prisoner, on the opposite side of the arena you see two doors exactly alike and side by side. Each is heavily curtained with skins on the inside, so that it's impossible that any noise should come from within to inform you what fate lies on the other side. Behind one is a tiger, behind the other a beautiful maiden. At the king's signal, you will walk directly to one of the doors and open it, choosing either one you please. Should you open the door that will release a tiger, you will be eaten, and your guilt will be established. Should you open the other door, you will thereupon prove your innocence, and you will be immediately married to the lovely young girl who awaits you there. Isn't it exciting? I should say. 
never know if you're going to see a terrible slaughter or a gay wedding. I, I, I think today I'd prefer a wedding. Oh, Father. I suppose I'm just a sentimental old fool. Well, look, Father. He can't make up his mind. I'll give him a chance. There. Look! The tiger! The tiger! Just as I suspected. Guilty. That terrible man. Got just what was coming to him. Have to protect our people, you know. Oh, Father, you're so kind. Always thinking of your subjects. And so must you, my daughter. Remember, they're your people, too. My people. Such a nice thought, my people. My people. Really, though, they aren't. They're fathers, and he rules them very sternly at times, though only for their own good. Now, if they were really my people, I should think I'd be able to do anything I'd want with them. Especially Alardo. Brave, sweet Alardo. Alardo, my own. Yes, Miridana. Say you love me. I cannot tell you I love you, Miridana. Alardo. For that would not tell you all I feel about you. Can I convey the pain, the torture when we are apart? Can I tell you of the fury in my blood when my thoughts try to bring you close to me and some fool profanes the air by speaking of other things? How can I say I love you and tell you one-tenth what you are to me? You are life and blood and air and everything that is precious to me. I am all these things to you, my love. I am possessed. Oh, Alardo, you're such a lovely man. Kiss me. Oh, that I would do, Miriadana, my flower. With all my heart, I would fain clutch you to my Alardo, breast. Alardo, kiss me. Hmm? Yeah, oh, my darling. Oh. <sighs> you must always stay with me, forever and ever. I promise that I shall, Miriadana. Only, when shall you ever be my bride? Alardo, that again. But, Miriadana, you are my own true love. If you will not have Father me... Father would never permit you to marry me. Am I not good enough for you? You're good enough for me, but not for Father. It is unjust. It is not. You know perfectly well a princess can never marry a commoner. It just isn't done. And why isn't it, pray? Well, I don't know. It, it isn't, that's all. Well, Miridana, my own, let me go to your father and tell him that I love you. Oh, no. He would dispatch you to the arena without a moment's hesitation. Then I will be satisfied. If I cannot have you, let the tigers have me. And then what shall I have? Oh, no, a lot, oh, my lover, I cannot let you. Then what shall I do? Well, why don't you just persuade Father to promote you to uh, a general or something? General? I don't want to be a soldier. Not just any soldier, darling, a general, a nobleman. Then we could be married. Yes, I suppose you're right. Silly, of course I'm right. Why don't you talk to Father about it? Do you think I dare? Of course, I'll get you an audience with him. You'd better think of something clever to say if you want him to reward you. With you at my side, Miradonna, how can I fail? Oh, oh, I, I won't be at your side, Alardo. Father wouldn't like it if he thought we knew each other. I'd better stay at his side. I think I can help you more from there. Sweet, Miradonna. Sweet, Alardo. I'll be so proud of you when you're a general. Kiss me. There is really nothing so difficult in exercising one's powers of persuasion on a barbaric king like Zerabino. Like others of his class, he's greatly given to self-communing. When he and himself are agreed upon anything, the thing is done. When every member of his domestic and political systems moves smoothly in its appointed course, his nature is bland and genial. But whenever there is a little hitch and some of his orbs get out of their orbits, he is blander and more genial still for nothing pleases him so much as to make the crooked straight and crush down uneven places. And so all that remains for me is to create some uneven place and point out a way to smooth it over. And with success, I may yet become a general and consort to the lovely Miridana. This youth before us, what did you say his name was, Miridano? Alardo, Father. Your most humble subject, Your Majesty. Yes, yes, Alardo. Pinabel, make arrangements to send him to the arena. To the arena, Your Majesty? To the arena, most merciful king. To the arena. Father, 
Whatever for? He's presumptuous. That's why they have a fall. Coming in here, telling me how they do things in Rome. What's Rome got that we haven't got? Our arena is bigger and better than anything they ever had. Well, true, Your Majesty, but uh, is it civilized? Well, it's just as civilized as the one in Rome. Well, perhaps it's a bad choice of words, Your Majesty. After all, what is civilization? Hmm? What is civilization? Oh, yes, Your Majesty. Well, that's an impertinent question if I ever heard one. Tell about him. Tell him. Me? Your Majesty? Yes, yes, go ahead. Tell this impertinent young upstart. Uh, don't you think it's too impertinent for the Prime Minister to have to answer, Great King? Oh, answer him, will you? Uh, yes. Uh, civilization. Mm, well, it's uh, the arena. Ah, exactly. The arena. Uh, your pardon, Majesty. Civilization is so much more. More than the arena? The public bath? Well, your Majesty, civilization is progress, advance. Pinnabelle. We have been making progress. Oh, definitely, Your Majesty. Well, then... Well, such limited progress, Your Majesty. What have we done to encourage people in the arts as they do in Rome? Nothing. How many poets are there in the kingdom? Practically none. In Rome, there are many. Many what? Poets, Your Majesty. Poets? They write poetry. That all they do? Of course. Shameful. Disgraceful, Your Majesty. Wasting good time writing about birds and trees and the like. Ought to be doing something useful. How true, Your Majesty. And yet, a poet's usefulness depends on his inspiration. What is there to inspire a Roman poet but a bird, a tree, a beautiful woman? Nothing. But here, Your Majesty, the poet finds true inspiration in the greatness of our kingdom, mm. in the majesty of Zerabino himself. Really? You mean they'd, they'd write about me? Of course, Your Majesty, if they were encouraged to do so. Well, I certainly have no objections. Do you, Pinabel? Oh, I myself would consider it a great achievement to honor the mighty Zerabino in uh, poetic phrases, Your Majesty. Yes, we should encourage young men to follow this pursuit. By all means, Your Majesty. I'll do it. Is that all, young man? Yes, Your Majesty. Very well. Pinabel, you may take him to the arena now. Father! He said he was finished. Father! Uh, he should be rewarded, not put on trial for his life. You really think so? Of course. It was his idea, you know. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I thought he was very clever. Well, see here, young lady, just why are you showing so much interest in him? Fair is fair, Father. Hmm. Perhaps you're right. What shall we give him? Money? Perhaps a post in the army, Father. Good idea. A general, perhaps. Mm, no, no, far too young. A captain, captain. Yes, that's it. Pinabel, see to it, make him a captain. A captain? Pinabel, see if you can place him in a unit that's ready to march. March? Where? Oh, they must be fighting someplace or other. Uh, get you some good combat experience. That's the way to get ahead in the army. Well, I, I don't, I, I don't really want oh, to. Oh, that's all right, my boy. You've earned it. Just shows what you can do by using your head. You are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, The Lady or the Tiger. This Sunday night, hear Ann Baxter heading the cast of The Plow and the Candle on your Playhouse of Stars. And on the same evening, you'll be waiting for Lionel Barrymore's Hall of Fame Playhouse on most of these same stations. Every Sunday night, Mr. Barrymore is host and narrator of an original drama spotlighting some unsung hero or heroine of American history. This Sunday night, for the Hall of Fame Playhouse and Theater of Stars, be listening to CBS Radio. How cruel I, to dream leave on a year long, a captain of destiny, no general I. To dream paradise and awaken a captain in the army. To fight in the army. To leave on a year-long expedition. True love, the beautiful prince engine that takes me from my own spirit, Donna. But at last, in her garden by the light of the moon, there she stands, silhouetted against the evening sky. Oh, my mirror, Donna, how I have longed for this moment. Psst. Oh, what? Psst. Who is that? It is I, Alardo. Alardo? Oh, Miriadonna, 
How I waited for this moment to hold you in my arms like this, to press your lips to mine. Oh, oh my darling, again and again. Oh, oh, gladly, Alardo. Who's there? What is this? We are discovered. Well, it's only my mistress, Miradana. Miradana? Yes, Miradana. Is this how I find you on your return from the war? Miradana, you? Yes, I. Well, then who is this in my arms? Well, it is I, Flora Lee. Flora Lee? You prefer making love to my lady-in-waiting? Well, well, I, I, I thought it was you, Miradana, my love. How can you be so cruel as to call me your love with that woman in your arms? Oh, uh, I, I didn't notice. Come over here in the moonlight, you deceiving wench. Well, I did nothing to deceive you, Alardo. You kissed me, did you not? Well, you kissed me, did you not? Well, that's different. I couldn't tell who you were in the dark. I thought you were Miradonna. I wonder. I knew who you were. Enough. Oh, uh, Miradonna, I swear... Would well, you find me no longer attractive, sweet Alardo? Mm. Well, you're, you're very pretty, of course. Alardo. But you are not my Miradonna, the fairest flower of our land, the dream of my heart for these long months away. You, Flodily, back to my bedchamber. Yes, my princess. Goodbye, Alardo. Alardo, how could you? I swear, my love, I did not know. I saw only the shadow of a girl in the moonlight, and my heart was pounding so with the thought of holding you once more in my arms. How was I to know it was another? She did not seem to be struggling to get away from you. No, she didn't struggle, did she? I wonder why not. Perhaps you did know it was Fleur de Lis and not I. Oh, Miridana. Did you enjoy the kiss? Of course not. How could I? You thought you were kissing me and did not enjoy it? Well, well, that is, I was deceived by her. I could tell in an instant, though, that something was amiss, that those lips were not Miradonna's lips. And the second time you kissed her, was that to make certain they were not my lips? Second time? I don't think you love me anymore. Say not so, Miradonna. I love you more now than ever before. I shall always love you. And ever more and more. It isn't fair that you kissed Flutely before you kissed me. I don't like her. Or oh, try to forgive her, my love. It wasn't entirely her fault. Yes, it was. She's always had an eye out for you. Really? Detestable creature. She's trying to steal you away from me, that's what. Well. But she'll never get you. Never. Oh, of course not, Miridana. Never. You're mine. And nothing will ever come between us again. You don't say. Uh, who goes there? Who stalks in the king's garden? Only the king. Well, a lardo, isn't it? Your majesty. Father, how long have you been here? Long enough. I presume you both know that this love affair is not happily conceived. But, Father, it's nothing. Really, there's no need for you to be upset. Oh, but there is. You see that, don't you, Alardo? Your Majesty, I love your daughter and she loves me. Why can't we be married? Because she is a princess and you are not a prince. I think that covers the situation. Almost. Father, no. My child, I have a duty to my people. This sort of thing just isn't done. No, I'm afraid he'll have to go to prison. Not prison. Only temporarily. Until the arena is ready. Oh, no, Father. Your Majesty. Well, after all, we must have a trial, mustn't we? A trial for what, Your Majesty? Why, why, why? To determine whether you're guilty of loving my daughter. But I confess, I love your daughter. I need no trial to tell me yes or no. Now, see here, Alardo. You know the law. You're not judged until you go to the arena and open the door. You're only guilty if a tiger comes out to devour you. And if not a tiger, Your Majesty, shall I be permitted to marry your daughter? Nonsense! You'll marry whomever walks out of that door. If you're lucky enough to open the right one. Well, it's unjust. It's unfair. What could be more just than that you should decide your own fate? Bear in mind, Alardo, I have no part in this decision. I leave it to impartial, uncorruptible chance. Guards, throw him into prison. <laughs> Alardo. Whose voice is that? What demon is this that tricks me at such a moment into hearing my lover's voice? Alardo, come to the door. Miridana, can it be? It is, oh, my princess, to see you once again, to feel your soft touch, even through these iron bars. Hush, hush, sweet Alardo, I have only a moment. Eternity is but a moment with you, my love. Oh, Alardo, you are so brave and fine. Miridana, do not distress yourself for me. Few men are so lucky as I that they have even beheld your beauty in their lifetime. Oh, 
brave Alardo, sweet Alardo, handsome Alardo. Yes. I cannot let you die. You will not. What can you do? The king has decreed I shall go to the arena. You cannot change your father's mind. No, no, that I cannot do. But I shall discover which door of the arena hides the tiger and which the maiden they have selected for your marriage. You can do this? I can. Watch me when you enter the arena. I shall signal with my hand so that none but you will see. You would rather lose my love than see me die? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Miridana. But to live without you, I would rather meet the tiger. Oh, Alardo, you're so brave. If that is what you wish. But of course I should try to carry on, shouldn't I? Yes, I suppose you should. It will be better that you marry another maiden and live. I cannot bear to see you die. For your sake, then. I must go. Watch for my signal, Alardo. Watch for it. Yes. Goodbye, my love. Goodbye. His Majesty, the most powerful, Zerubino. Let the ceremony begin. Bring forth the prisoner. Your Majesty, I am ready. Captain Alardo, you are accused of a crime for which you are now to be judged. You know the rules. You will try to cooperate. I will do my best, Your Majesty. Good, good. Uh, bear in mind that you will decide yourself whether you are guilty or innocent of this crime. It is in your hands. Should you open the door that releases the tiger? <laughs> and I might say in passing, we took special pains to find the largest and most savage tiger in the kingdom. Uh, there will be no escape from your judgment. You will be devoured, and we shall all mourn your passing. In honor of your past service, I've arranged for hired mourners for the occasion. Although it isn't likely you will hear them should their services be needed. Thank you, Your Majesty. It is most gracious of you. But... Should you open the other door, the perfect fairness of our justice will become obvious to you. For there you will find a beautiful maiden, the most suitable to your age and estate in all the land. She will make you a fitting bride. Now go. We anxiously await your judgment. Go to the tiger or to your bride, the beautiful Lady Fleur de Lis. My lady-in-waiting. No, it cannot be. That she-wolf who has always coveted his love, who's tried to take him away from me. Oh, how I hate her. And now am I to send him straight into her arms? Is this the price I must pay for saving his life? To give him to the one woman I hate most in this world? Better for him to die at once to go and wait for me in the blessed regions of futurity. No, oh no, that awful tiger, those shrieks, the blood. I cannot let him die, but I cannot give him to her, not to that wretched woman. What shall I do? He waits for my signal. <laughs> Go, Alado. We are waiting. The Lady Fleur de Lis. She will make a lovely bride, second in beauty only to Miridana herself. And how Miridana hates her. She is jealous even of the few moments I spent in the garden with Fleur de Lis. Ah, she signals. The door to my right. To my right. This is the one she wishes me to open. The door to my right. This is the one I shall open. What is behind it? My destruction? Or Fleur de Lis, my bride, whom you, Miridana, hate among all people? 
the door to my right, the lady or the tiger? The Lady or the Tiger by Frank Stockton, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis. In a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis will tell you about next week's play. Tomorrow night on CBS Radio, there's music in the air, beautiful music from Latin America, and great tunes from the continent. Your baritone host, Donald Richards, with Francis Greer, Clark Dennis, Betty Cox, the Serenaders, and Alfredo Antonini's orchestra, take us south of the border for Siboné, Amor, 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 and many another favorite from Latin America. Then it's off to Europe for Cherry Berry Bin, April in Portugal, Mad Dogs and Englishmen, and other favorites. Tomorrow night on most of these same CBS radio stations, there's music in the air. And now once again, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. And so Frank Stockton wrote a satire, and it lived and became famous as one of the most frustrating experiences in literature. When he opened the door, the lady or the tiger. And our thanks to Shelby Gordon for the fine adaptation. For those of you who are fans of both Luigi and Fred Allen, we were privileged tonight to have my father, the king, played by Pasquale and Falstaff, or in simpler terms, Alan Reed. Thank you, Alan. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Kathy. It was fun. I enjoyed it. If the door opened and a lady was there, the lady Fleur de Lis, you would have seen that she was played by Sammy Hill. And Junius Matthews was the unprofessional Prime Minister Pinabel. A few weeks ago, we did a lovely story, Call Me a Cab, which many of you told us you liked. And so we asked Shirley Gordon, its authoress... And no relation to Shelby Gordon, who adapted tonight's story... ...to write another radio play for us, she did. It's called The Bunch of Violets, and we're going to do it for you next week. Until then, thanks for listening, and good night. Good night. Music for tonight's story was composed by Fred Steiner and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Kathy and Elliot theme is by Ray Noble, and the program is transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis. George Walsh speaking. America now rides to the tune of 25 million auto radios and listens most to the CBS Radio Network.